Well, Dave, that, that's two Tuesdays running now that your side has had to, to dig in deep and, and grind out a result against a team struggling at the bottom of the table, which probably emphasises again that there really are no easy games at this level. No, I, I think Tuesday across the league, I suppose, shows um, when you are coming on the back of a, a Saturday and a, and, a, and a different type of result and performance that you, it, they do become an arm wrestle. Um, and... Like I said, at half time there were no goals in any of the four games. Um, at the end of the games, we there was obviously three goals in our game. I think Newport score in injury time to, to beat Hartlepool. Apart from that, no other no other goals. So they're always tight. Um, the league's a, a tight league. I don't think you see many sort of blowouts really, um, even between Saturdays and Tuesdays. And you've got to be you've got to be right at it. We're at the part of the season where. The majority of teams in, in, in the league have got something to play for and something to fight for. There aren't many that are sat in a position where they're either safe or can't get into those playoff positions. So every game's competitive. Everyone's got something, like say, something to play for. Um, and Tuesday night was no different for us. Is it the stage of the season now, especially in the middle of such a busy schedule, where it's more about the result than it is the performance? It's always about the result, but... Um, I'm a big believer in the fact that if you control performances, then more often than not, the results take the care of themselves over, over a long period. Um, if you aren't playing well, you're going to be very lucky to go on a, a, a winning run and, and win for a significant period. Um, and if you aren't playing well, then you have to, I suppose, do what it, do what it takes. That's, that's the big thing, you, you, like I say. If you can control performance and make sure that bit or large parts of that are right, then you should hopefully over the, the course of the season win more than win more than you lose. Um, I suppose the key is when you don't play well and when you are having a bit of an off night that you manage to take something from the game. We've been, like I say, we've been we've been good at that recently, um, and probably good at that, like I say, since take the first first month or so out of it. Um, it's something that we've managed to do on a consistent basis. Five wins in a row now, that's County's best run in the Football League since 2008. Twice last season, obviously, you went on a 10-game winning run that really propelled you towards promotion. Does this feel similar in terms of the momentum that you're building right now? Um, listen, I think to win 10 games of football on, on the spin on one occasion um, is a phenomenal achievement. To do it twice in a season was, again, unheard of. Um, I think... To do it at this level is is a lot more difficult. I think, regardless, we we were in a league last year where our squad um, was a lot stronger than other uh, other squads in the in the in the division. Um, this year, I still back our squad, but it's a lot tighter than than what it was. Um, so it is difficult to win get games of football at any level. Um, but as you say, we've managed to to do it on a consistent basis over the recent past, and we go into into Saturday's game looking to add another one to that but knowing that if we're if we're, if we're not at it then the it becomes a like I say a toss of a coin in terms of going and getting that going and getting that result we've got ourselves in a, like I say in a good position we want to keep that run going now for as long as possible it's obviously a little bit different to this time last year in that for now at least you are the team doing the chasing rather than uh, being chased is that <coughs> a, a different kind of pressure no I, I, pressure is what it is um i'm i'm not a like I say, a big sort of, not believer in it, but it doesn't really affect where I'm at. Like I say, I think from a, a personal perspective and from a management perspective, what what we've tried to hammer on to the, the players is that it doesn't really matter where we are now. Listen, let's be very clear. I, I think if you asked every single manager team in the league, would you rather be sat in Leighton Orient's position, they'd all say yes. So if pressure for, comes from being... 13 points clear at the top, like Leighton Orient are, we'd absolutely all swap with them. Um, so we came into this season wanting to be part of big games, wanting to be part of important games, and knowing that over 46 games, we wanted to finish in a certain position that hopefully would um, make the last bit exciting. That's what you do it for. Um, every single player that, that came here knew that that was the objective and where we wanted to be. Um, we didn't start as we wanted, but we've given ourselves an opportunity now. But there's still a long, long way to go. We're 14 games, 14 games left. Um, lots of points up for grabs. We just need to keep ticking off wins and get wins as quickly as possible, if you like. But that's the same for every team in, in the division. The, the pressure, I suppose, at the top and middle end 
is a whole lot better pressure than um, than it is down the bottom when um, I suppose your, your football league futures on the on the line. Um, but as I said previously, everyone's got something to something to play for. So um, if we can get into games where from the outside looking in, they look more important and have more pressure on them, then it says we're doing something something right. And I hope that's the I hope that's the case. Do you have a, a particular points target in mind over the next 14 games? Obviously, the last couple of seasons, it's been around the, the 79, 80 point mark in terms of that third automatic promotion. Place. I think it'll take more than that. That's Again, we, we do have a, um, a points total in mind, but we had a points total in mind at the, at the start of the season that we thought would potentially win the, win the league. And um, you're in a, a live, unique situation, Leighton Orient and Miles outscoring that. Um, the other teams are sort of in and, in and around it. Um, so what you have to, you look at it in both ways. Listen, we, we're aiming for a certain amount of points totals. We're looking to look to win every game. We're going to look to win on Saturday and then move on to the next one. We have to chalk them off that way. If the, the points figure at the end of it is significantly less than we're aiming for, then we'll all be absolutely delighted. But I think we, we, you get to a point in football where as much as you be optimistic, you have to be pessimistic in, in certain aspects and we want to get as many points as possible, as quickly as possible, and then see where we stand. Great to see Fraser Horswell back on the bench on Tuesday. Presumably that's a situation that needs to be managed carefully in terms of integrating him back into the team. But I suppose the benefit of that is you've not needed to, to rush him back because of the job that Neil Byrne's been doing back there. Yeah, listen, we, we want everybody fit. Um, so, like I say, Sars and Paddy have been back out on the grass and obviously Fraser's, Fraser's back in. Um, the sooner we can get everybody back up to speed um, and giving us those options, the better. Um, I spoke to the players after the weekend and again on, on Tuesday. We're, we've got a really strong squad where we're leaving players out of the squad, if you like, not based on performances, based on what we think is the best way or how we preempt games might go and where, how, where we might need to change it. Having Fraser back is, is massively important for us. Yeah, potentially it's one that we we maybe need to manage, but I've no qualms about chucking him back in if, if, if we need to. Like I say, defensively, Burn has come in and, and done a really steady job. Um, and that back three has looked really, really comfortable. Um, and like I say, if you'd have said that at the start of the season or midway through the season that you were going to lose one of your most influential players in Fraser for, for six weeks, you suggested that could have been a, could have been a problem. Um, so we've, we've managed to get over that hurdle, if you like, um, without losing momentum. We're now, at, uh, like I say, a, a really positive spot where he's back up to speed, is absolutely desperate to get back in the, back in the team and be part of, um, hopefully, a successful last part of the season. And in terms of Paddy and Sars, you said they're back out on the grass. How far away are they from being involved again? Um, I, I'd hope that um, we, we forwarded Sars's recovery a little bit, to be fair. So he's back joining in, but n not under any risk. He's ticked off the, the, the boxes that we need to tick in terms of getting him back involved. We just need to manage him over the next week or so. Um, I would hope, with no setbacks, they'd both potentially... Maybe not next weekend, although that will be very close, but certainly uh, we play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday that, that week. Um, there will hopefully be some involvement for them um, in, in, in that part of the, uh, the week, if you like, um, which again will be um, really, really pleasing and a, and a massive boost to what already is a really competitive squad. Just looking ahead at Barrow now, obviously a, a couple of familiar faces in their squad in Elliot Newby and Ben Whitfield. Wits has obviously become a, a big player from them since joining the summer. It'll be good to see them again. Yeah, listen, I think we're, we're at a point where from last season, people who did really well for us um, because of where we've gone in terms of in terms of our squad, people have people have moved on, and every single one of them played played a part in, in what we did last year, and played a part in what we did at the, at the start of this year in, in some instances. So nobody, I can't again. You'll have spells at football clubs where people maybe will leave on not great terms. That's not the case with any of the players that have gone out the, out the building, um, either on loan or permanently here. So um, yeah, of course, it's great to see. Um, former players, players that have done well, not just for, for me, I worked them for a short period, but ultimately have done well for the, well for the football club. Um, we obviously hope they have a, a really bad day and that we can um, console them and, and, um, and say hello to them at, at the end of the game, having, having taken three points, but um, no, it'll be good to catch up. 
obviously that, that first half of the first game of the season was a pretty uh, brutal reintroduction to life in the Football League for County. Is there a sense of, of owing them from that game or do you not get drawn into that? No, not really. Um, we're a different, a different team than we were, we were then. Um, what we, we have to do when we did for that, for, from that first month is you have to learn and learn quickly um, and recognise that if you make the mistakes that we made, on that first day, and if we make the same mistakes that we did, that we did and we do that again on Saturday, we'll lose the game. Um, or we'll have to be very good or a little bit lucky, as we nearly were in the first game, to get something from it. Um, the difference again between first half and second half performance was, was chalk and cheese, and um, we've got to make sure we see more of that second half performance than we did the first half. And if we do that, like I say, as with every game, um, we're, in with a, we're in with a good chat of winning, just as, just as Barrow are. Dave, thanks for talking to us. Good luck on Saturday. Cheers, Liam. Thank you.